Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm gonna jump right into it. And I know many of you saw the last video I put out with one of our at-large city councilors, Karen Kalinowski. And that video, we specifically talked about one big issue. And at the January 24th city council meeting, a petition that Karen Kalinowski submitted to have the layout of North Street, the bike lanes, the parklets, the traffic pattern change and all that go on the ballot this year for the voters to decide. Because we all know it's been a huge discussion in the community. We've seen a couple different versions of it and people are frustrated. They're frustrated that they didn't have a say on that for one. So Councillor Kalinowski, one of our at-large counselors, submitted this pet petition and it passed at that council meeting five to four. And I was a little confused as to why four of those counselors that were present and voted uh, didn't feel that the voters should be voting on this. That was a little confusing to me. I, I, didn't, I didn't quite get that. Two of the city councilors were not present. One of our at-large counselors, Earl Persip, and the Ward 7 city councilor, Tony Mafuccio, was not there. But uh, I still think if they had been present, it would have passed 6-5. That's what my gut tells me. But so it passed and some of the reasons given, like our Ward 6 city councilor, Dina Lampiazzi said, there's plenty of bigger things that the community could vote on and I don't think this is one of them. I didn't quite understand that. Uh, What's the big deal? Have it on the ballot. This is a huge issue in the community that affects everyone who lives in Pittsfield that wants to shop and dine and do things downtown. The business owners that are on North Street, uh, everyone in the community. And uh, I believe having that on the ballot, we're gonna, we would see one of the biggest turnouts we've seen in a city election in a long time. So. I didn't quite get that. And I really honestly would be willing to bet if you put those bike lanes and that goes on the ballot, as it should, it did pass. I'm gonna talk about that quickly too because two days or a day, day or two after the city council meeting, the local paper did a piece on that saying, well, it's not quite a done deal yet. And I didn't get that. I mean, you watch what they voted on and they clearly voted for that to go on the ballot and it did pass. So I don't know why, I don't know what's going on, and I hope they don't try to find some kind of loophole or legality to say, no, that, that, that shouldn't be on the ballot. Because I honestly believe we would see a 50% or higher voter turnout if that was on there. You know, one of the biggest things I hear from people during election years is, it don't matter, it's always the good old boys or the same old, same old running. And people don't vote for that reason. The last city council election, uh, we had a 23% voter turnout. When the mayor's on the ticket, it'll run 38 to 41%, somewhere in that range for voter turnout. Uh, and it, that's sad to me, but I think this would be a huge push. People would see that they clearly do have a say. And do I think, me personally, do I think that the bike lanes, or, or I should say North Street just goes back to the way it was and we leave it that way? No. I don't. I think we need to come up with a solution that works for everyone, uh, that's gonna make it just a better destination spot. Easier to park, easier to go out and shop and dine, uh, and accessible to everyone. I don't feel this layout has provided that. When we brought in the uh, rideshare program with Bird e-scooters, which I don't know if that's going to be in existence much longer. Their stock has been holding right around 25 cents. Bird Canada, which is a separate entity, put in $35 million and kind of rescued the company a little bit. They bought into them and took over. Uh, but everything that I've been reading on that is they're, they're doing away with a lot of the locations that they've been in and focusing on some of the bigger cities, college campuses. Um, Washington DC just denied them a permit uh, and they're appealing that uh, because they did provide a permit for Lyft and a couple of other brands, I think four, four uh, scooter rideshare programs. But 
I never felt that was a good fit for Pittsfield anyway. And the reason I'm really mentioning in that is because that added to more traffic that was still on the sidewalks. So we put in these bike lanes. The first uh, attempt they did with them, it didn't last long. It was bike lane, then parking, then travel lane. And that was a disaster. People were opening their cars into traffic. It was a disaster. Um, and very confusing and dangerous. So then they switched it to back to parallel parking, bike lane, then travel lane. But again, nobody is enforcing, okay? So all you see is bicycles and scooters during the, the season on the sidewalks. That's where everyone was traveling. Uh, occasionally, you'd see a couple of bikes in the bike lane, but the majority of that traffic was still using the sidewalks or going the wrong way in the bike lanes. I, I used to go up and film it, and then I just figured, you know, after a year of doing that, I, I made my point. But I do think we need to look at a better solution for downtown Pittsfield. We can do much better and we should focus on downtown, making it a true destination spot, making it easily accessible and focusing on our businesses. What is best for the business climate? How do we grow our tax base that way rather than continually raising taxes and watching more and more businesses leave our community? Why don't we focus on making our community as inviting as possible and boosting that tax base that way? You know, I feel like at times they don't just put the cart before the horse, they put the cart out there with no horse. And I kind of feel like that's what happened with these bike lanes. If you're gonna do parklets, do them right. The Jersey barriers, making it look like it's a construction site, ah, it's not appealing. Aesthetically, it's not appealing. Uh, I think we can do much better with the whole design, and I think that the community deserves an input in this. So I know some of the counselors are, were against it. Uh, our city council president, Peter Marchetti, our city council vice president, Pete White, I believe Kevin Sherman, the Ward 3 counselor, and Dina Lampiazzi, the Ward 6 counselor, were against the voters having a say in this. And I, it just boggles me. You know, it really does because that would be great for voter turnout. It really would. It would allow the voters and the community to feel like they're really part of something. So I hope that nothing happens to change that. I really do. Uh, you know, and as far as this platform, I just want to touch on this and then I'll wrap it up. You know, it's hard for me to talk about some of this stuff. I get when I started this platform, I talked a lot about politics. And as I started growing it more and more, I got into promoting businesses and promoting community. And I made the big leap for three, four months ago, whenever it was, to move to a downtown location. I invested a ton of money into to setting up the new studio. And now I have to make money. I have to take on sponsors and make money to keep this going. And the frustrating part with that is, is I know it can be toxic <laughs> talking politics when it comes to having sponsors or advertisers. But it's hard for me not to do that. It really is because uh, it was the foundation of this whole thing. And the premise was not to be negative. There's nothing, I, I never looked at any of this negative. As long as you're not being vicious and cruel to somebody, then you're not being negative. If you're talking about issues and you're trying to have people involved and get community involved, I mean, that's the biggest thing. Uh, there's no negativity to that. Are there politicians that might not like some of the stuff I say? Probably, um, but that's politics. Politics can be really dirty and nasty. And I feel like eight years ago, we took a turn in city politics where it became so vicious and continued, not just during the elections, it continued with certain people in the community that would attack people on social media, that would go after other counselors, that would use their influence in the city to harass people. Uh, and it set a horrible tone. And there's a lot of people I've talked to that I've said, why don't you run for office? You know, why don't you do that for the community? It's one of the most honorable things you can do is running for public office. And it should be encouraged in this city. But it, not only is it not encouraged, I hear from people, oh, no way. 
No way. I couldn't put myself and my family through that. No way. And, and it's heartbreaking and gut-wrenching to hear that. I hope people think about that this year and really make the decision to run. It's an honorable thing. It should be fun to put a campaign together. And I hope we can pull away from that vicious, vicious nastiness. Uh, it's horrible. I've been sucked into it at times myself. Um, it's awful. I don't like it. And it does nothing for the community. It adds no value to the community. It doesn't help. Uh, and again, it discourages people from running for office. And that's the real shame because, you know, the whole idea of democracy and government is it's, it is for everyone. It's all inclusive. It's for everyone to step up, to have a voice, to be heard, to be part of something. Nobody controls this. Uh, nobody should tell you you're ignorant. You don't know what you're talking about. You wouldn't make it past the primary. You're a joke. You know, I've heard a lot of that stuff myself from people in the community that regard themselves very influential. Uh, nobody should have to tolerate that. But again, that's where it, it gets tricky for me doing this, but it's hard for me to step away from that part of this platform because it's so important. And I think if we can get past that whole vibe in the community where people aren't afraid to speak up, you know, when you can see city council meetings where counselors are not going after each other and fighting and name calling and it's, it's getting too crazy. And the only way for the community to really survive is everybody come together. Of course, we're going to greatly disagree on issues at times, but don't, don't be an AH about it. Really. There's no need for that. Stick to the issues. If someone you think someone's wrong, then you think they're wrong, and that's your opinion, and that's okay. If you don't like what somebody's saying, rather than being vicious and mean to them, you say what you're saying, let them say what they're saying, and leave it be. You know, that's you don't have to go to people's social media pages that you agree with and just start arguing with them. Or that I'm I'm sorry, that you disagree with and start arguing with them. Just if you don't like what somebody's saying, don't listen. Don't listen. It's that simple. Uh, but anyway, get involved, people. I want to see more people run for office this year. I want to see community grow. This could be a great year for us. And, you know, it's a, it is a scary time right now with inflation, with the cost of everything, watching fuel costs going back up. There's a lot going on. And... National politics is something I stay away from because I don't feel like I can add to that. I mean, I'd be just another talking head on that. But when it comes to local community and local politics and local things, we all can be part of that. So get involved, participate, consider running for office, definitely get registered and make sure you vote in city elections. And Pay attention to these council meetings. If you have cable, there's channel spec, uh, Spectrum Cable. It's channel 1303. PCTV does a great job on their website, and they post a lot of them that they stream to Facebook often. Not every time, but they, they do do that quite a bit. But you can go to their website, and I believe they stream through Apple and Roku and every outlet on there. Um, take the time to pay attention. They are important. And this February 14th Valentine's Day City Council meeting coming up is going to be a good one. And hopefully they don't backtrack on that vote that took place to get this on the ballot. Because I think it would be the, one of the best things this year for an election year. It would, it would turn out would be one of the best years we've seen. And people would feel like they truly have a voice and a say in the community. And you don't just have to be a connected good old boy, which until we can break from that, that terminology will never go away. It will never go away. So that's it. I know this was a long one and I, I mumbled a little bit, but get involved, stay active, look out for yourselves, look out for each other, and I'll catch you all in the next day or two.